All right, everybody. Welcome back to another episode of Fortunes in Reselling. We have the same great panel as well as a special guest, which I'll let him introduce himself. But tonight, in addition to all the reselling stuff we'll talk about, we're going to focus on returns and customer service. So how that affects not only eBay, but all other selling platforms. So let's get started let's, with introductions. Shane, you want to go? Yeah, what's up, everybody? It's Shane, the Rising Iron Picker. And um, you know, I pretty much flip anything, saw on eBay and Amazon. And uh, glad to have our guest tonight and glad to be here. It's going to be a great show. Wade, what about you, man? Boom! Just trying to get a live chat up. What's going on, my? What's going on, guys? Welcome in to yet another Sunday. Yet another Sunday, you're spending time with us. It's a great topic um, because I've got a unique perspective on free returns. But uh, welcome in, guys. Sunday. Glad to be on Chris's channel, and uh, I will pass it over to uh, the man himself, Mr. Jason, over there, looking pretty. <laughs> what's going on guys jason thrift trader here uh thanks for having me another sunday night show glad that you guys are here and uh i'm gonna pass it on to our guest please introduce introduce yourself what's up everybody my name is uh fat man the flipper um and i want to thank you guys for you know allowing me to share this experience with you guys um also i want to thank shane for inviting me here and um you know, I'm I'm a new reseller. I don't have but maybe three months under my belt. Um, but I've been going hard. If you ask anybody that knows me, I don't stop. Um, I haven't stopped. I've been selling on eBay for about three months, Amazon for a little over two months, and Poshmark. I started a couple weeks ago. Um, and and yeah, that that's that's me, man. Four years ago, I was homeless and. And it's a it's a blessing that I'm here today, alive, free, you know, with a with a roof over my head, to be able to do this and share this experience with you guys. That's awesome. That's awesome, Alex. I heard uh, I heard that you're also a stand up comedian. Is that true? No, 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 no. <laughs> no, I mean everybody. No, no, he did his first show and he killed everybody it. Everybody tells me I should do it, you know, and I, I did it once, once or twice, you know, and the first time I did it, I, I killed it, you know, but uh, that, that was a long time ago. I mean, maybe one day I'll do it again, you know, but uh, right That's now awesome. I'm focused on this, you know. <laughs> there you go. There you go. You should, man. You should. I'm telling you. Well, that's, uh, I think it's really cool because, um, look, you know, it's nice to get like, I'm not saying you're new, but for three months, it's nice to get, you know, a different perspective. Like, uh, it's going to be really cool to bounce ideas off of you. Like returns is, returns is this interesting, um, you know, for a topic today. It's like, you know, I'm making a lot of changes just based on returns. So I'm excited for it. What's up, Sand Hill? Treasures. What's going on, guys? Make sure you hit the thumbs up button for this channel. And if you're not subscribed, subscribe. But uh, all right, Chris, let's get into this. How to handle returns and tips for customer service. So there's kind of two ways to look at it, right? Uh, how do we handle the actual return itself and then offering returns? So I don't know which we want to talk about first. Anybody? Uh, we could, well, let's just start with offering returns, like, mm -hmm. uh, or how, how, you know, how we run our returns. So who, who offers free returns? I offer free returns. I do, I do as well. Jane does. Jason? No. <laughs> no. Jason, why don't you elaborate since you're the lone wolf here? Okay. Yeah. Well, uh, you know, when I started dabbling in shoes, and the majority of the listings that I currently have on eBay are shoes, the problem with offering free returns is I feel like it opens the door for, um, you know, people to just return even if they don't like the color of the item, which isn't isn't a bad bad deal but the problem is shoes cost a considerable amount more money to to ship especially if they're shipped in a box you know um and if you're selling a pair of shoes for thirty dollars it's eight dollars to ship it there eight dollars to get it back in a return and after ebay fees paypal fees and all the shipping i mean you you couldn't you couldn't turn around and sell it again and make a profit. That's the only reason. I I assume that uh, you know 
I could probably turn on free returns on some of my items, but I probably would not do that on shoes. Yeah, I think, I mean, I have free returns on all platforms and if they want a return, they're going to get a return. So that's the way I think about it. Oh yeah. I mean, I, I, I offer returns, no doubt. Um, you know, there's no, nothing wrong with that. But the thing is, is like, um, I just won't, I don't offer free return. And uh, I think that that's kind of, I might change my mind at some point. I've done free returns in the past and uh, just noticed a uh, major increase in uh, my return rate, unfortunately. So, right. Now, so if, if I may, I mean, I, me personally, I don't, on eBay, I don't offer free returns. Um, now, on Amazon, I, I think I don't have a choice. Uh, I'm not sure I do. But my thing is, um, you know, I remember my first return, and it was on Amazon. I haven't gotten returns on eBay. I haven't gotten returns on Poshmark either. I've gotten good reviews and everything, luckily, so far. Um, but, uh, as, I mean, I'm, I'm, with, I'm there with them. Like, me, as far as eBay goes, I, I don't offer the free returns. But what I do is, you know, I make it real clear. And I, I don't lie about a thing. You know, if there's a flaw on a on on a stuffed animal, like I got a Pikachu right now that sells for fifty bucks because it's vintage. You know what I'm saying? But I'm, I, you know, I gotta stitch it up and all that stuff. So I'm I'm gonna sell it as is. And if they want to pay twenty bucks for it, just make sure. Look, you gotta stitch it up or you gotta clean it up. You gotta do this and that. I'm I'm honest with it. And I say, look, it. You know, if you want to return it, just return it the same way it, it is. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, you got to be careful with that because there's there's a lot of people in this uh, in a lot of buyers that don't read at all. <laughs> so yep. you got to be careful with that. Yep. Well, I mean, it is it is what it is, you know. But to, up yep. to now, I haven't had any returns on eBay or Poshmark. Um, luckily, on Amazon, I did I did have a couple returns. Well. I and I think the best part of that is if you stitch it up, just use the same color thread that the rest is stitched up with, and then just put in the description or like the, the condition. Hey, I fixed a flaw on this, but it looks it it you know I fixed a flaw on this. It was ripped open on the side. I stitched it up, and and now it it looks it looks good. So take a picture of where you stitched it too, if you want further right. uh, help on a return if that does happen. Yeah, but I've, I mean, I've never had any uptick in returns offering free returns. It really, for me, it's been negligible. So there's a few reasons, there are a few things that I'm doing basically based on returns. My return rate's like under 3% and I do a lot of clothing, right? So for me, like I got tired of, so basically just to take a step back so you guys understand, um, eBay now has a new thing basically to where if you have free returns, um, no matter if it's your fault or the buyer's fault, because a lot of times guys, let's be honest, when buyers buy stuff, um, just to, if you do not offer free returns, they'll say that there was a flaw with, you know, flaw wrong with it, mm -hmm. it smells. They'll come up with different things that aren't necessarily possibly true. Maybe some of them are just so they don't have to pay the return shipping, right? And then you have to fight that and then, you know, you lose sleep trying to figure out if they're going to leave, leave a negative feedback because then that equals another 45-minute call to eBay to try to fight that. It just comes to the point where my time is so much more valuable than having to fight a negative feedback and fight somebody based on, you know, the fact that I don't want to pay the return shipping. Um, so basically, I decided, look, um, eBay's new policy basically is, is if there's anything wrong with the uh, – anything that I did wrong or the buyer possibly made up and did wrong – if they left you, left you a negative feedback and they opened a return, that's the key thing. If they buy something and th there's something wrong with it, maybe you screwed up and they do not open the return, then their negative feedback will stay on there. However, if they open a return for any reason, yes, you have to pay the return shipping, but that negative feedback is automatically removed. And that saved me a ton of time. So no longer do I have to fight those, those, um, those negative feedbacks because a lot of times – Hey, if there's an issue with it, they're going to return it because it's free free returns for them. Right. And even if they left a negative feedback, then 
that gets removed automatically. So for me, guys, that's why I do free returns. It saves me so much more time and so much more less bull crap, right? Because if how many times, guys, and let me know in chat, did you sell an item? And they're like, oh, there was a flaw with it. When you darn know well, the, there, there was no flaw with it. But they said there was a flaw, and then you got to fight everything, right? You got to fight eBay, fight them. Uh, right. It just It's too much hassle, too much work. So that's why – I offer free returns on all my items. Now, there is some circumstances where you may want, possibly may, may not want to when it comes to like bigger items like Tronic, stuff like that. I can understand that. Um, but that's another reason. I think one way you can mitigate returns, there's a, there's a few ways that it helps me. One, I try to maximize the photos. I know this sounds like a basic solution. But if you do you know, anywhere from 10 to 12 photos and you maximize it, uh, you know, a lot of people like uh, Chris was saying, I believe, or maybe it was Shane, uh, people do, or no, no, Jason, maybe it was Jason, who knows? People do not read, right? Uh, a lot right. of people are visual buyers, visual learners. And if you do a lot of photos, then possibly they'll catch something that they don't like before they buy it. So maximize your pictures. Um, obviously, put if there's any flaws in the um, description. And then also what helps me guys um, when I was a new eBay seller was to do thank you cards, right? And you guys have seen those. I do not ask for feedback for one reason. I feel like that invites an opinion. But I do say thank you for shopping. If you want to shop with us again, here's my link. And they see that and it comes with an – I feel like since it comes from a – you know, with the picture of my family, it, 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 it lets them know that I'm a small business. And I feel like when people understand that they're buying something, not from a big corporation, but a small individual, a one or two man show, um, their feelings change a little bit if there is an issue, right? I feel like they're more, they're more apt to work with somebody that's a small seller than a big seller. So those postcards, those thank you cards, I think help if you're new. Uh, and then also doing little things like, uh, you guys know when you communicate with buyers in eBay, you can put your signature, right? So you can customize a signature with a photo. Mm -hmm. Just like if you, you work for a corporation, you can put your own signature with the photo. Um, and I do that. And I put just customer service, a picture of our logo down below there. That way when they're communicating, they know it's coming from a, a, a smaller seller, not a big, not a big company. So, I mean, that's just a few things that I do guys, but yeah, returns are part of the business. I know the feeling when I, when I get a return, I'm like, crap. <laughs> like, it come across, it's not a message or a sold item. Yes. Oh, yeah. Yes. Yeah, I, I, yes. I, hate, I hate hearing my phone go off with the eBay message sound instead of the cha-ching. That's a, yeah, you're waiting for the other noise. You're like, crap. Uh, you seek like four inches, you know, you're like, oh, <laughs> I got a return. <laughs> and then you look and right when, What's the first thing you do when you get a return? You see how how expensive the item is, right? Mm -hmm. Oh crap! Now I got to give eighty four dollars plus shipping, and it puts you in a bad mood automatically. But remember, guys, there's way more advantages for offering free returns. Like, let's say I get the item back. Yes, I sold it for sixty dollars. Yes, I had to refund the buyer sixty dollars plus shipping. Right. But if they do not return it in the same order. I'm not giving them the full return or nope. full refunds. I'm going to cut that, right? I'm going to cut that, mitigate that cost. Another thing too, guys, that people forget is if they open a return case and they do not return it within five business days, okay. you can call eBay and cancel the return and they're stuck with the item. That's it. Um, so I think that's really important when you get a free return, constantly be looking at your return page to see if it's been over five days. If it is, you call eBay and say, look, it's been over the five day period for them to ship it back and make sure they cut that, right? Uh, no longer will you have to refund the money. But my last thing here is, yes, you had to refund the $60, but remember, as long as there's nothing wrong with it, you can you can resell it and market it to millions and millions of buyers again. It will sell again. Right. And that's the worst too. When I get a return, if you sell GSP, Global Shipping Program, you're going to have to put the bill for that return. Uh, so you're going to have to put, you're going to have to click, uh, can't buy the label. They're going to have to buy their own label and you're going to have to refund that label price. But to Wade's point earlier, I try not to dwell too much on returns just because that's a lot of time and energy that you're putting into worrying about, okay, I just lost all this money. You know, now I got to worry about feedback. Well, you got to think about it as, okay, 
I bought this item for between two and five dollars. So realistically, it wasn't my money in the first place. Uh, I'm gonna get that item back, and I'm gonna say, how can I sell it and make money back at least, right? And then move more volume out of stuff that you already have. So that's kind of the way the mindset I look at returns. Don't let it get you down, but look at how you can make yourself better. Right. It's all about saving time. And um, like the world, there's so many things that when I switch to free returns, like weight has been lifted off my shoulders. Like there's been so many cases where I had to fight the return. And I'm like, why am I on the phone for an hour trying to convince a rep with eBay to side with me so I can get this completed and fight with the buyer? Like it eliminated so much hassle once I did it because I knew that if somebody wasn't happy, they're going to file a return. And either in five days, I'm going to cancel it, or they're going to file the return. I get no negative feedback. Don't have to worry if it was my fault or their fault. I'll get the item back. And if I get the item back, it's not in the same condition. I'll slap the uh, you know difference in the refund. So it's like a win, 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 win for me. Like it just, it's so much better. So that's kind of what it is. But the last thing I didn't tell you guys, is I'm moving all my clothing over to Poshmark. Excuse me. Um, so I'm no longer going to be doing a lot of clothes on eBay, primarily hard goods, and I'll move all my clothing over to Poshmark, and that's kind of what I'm doing. I do have two eBay accounts that I have publicly, so one of them will have the small amount of clothes I'll be putting on there, which would be about 800 items, and then the rest will be hard goods. So, I think Liquidation Pros, Dan, said, take responsibility of all your information. I think the responsibility is a big part, even if the seller says, you know, this is broken when you know it wasn't broken, you tested it. Big responsibility. I mean, that looks good on your part. If you do have to call eBay about something, uh, and offer a solution, fix it, move on. Yeah. At the, at the end of the day, the, the whole customer service thing, that's, that's the biggest part. You know, you, you make the customer happy. And at the end of the day, you know, you're going to, you can get a repeat customer, you know, or even, you know, it just it's it's less of a headache, you know. No, no. Uh, and, and I've uh, I know I've said this before, like, and I'll say it a thousand times again. Is I used to work for Target as a as a you know as management, and one of the things that and it was an executive manager, and I helped train people, I helped train staff, and one of the things that they helped train people on was the guest service experience. And if you can, if you can make that work and treat every person as your guest and make it outstanding, you will get great feedbacks. You will get all this stuff. I mean, you know, you have to try and you have to, you have to, uh, like if you get a, a purchase from a zero feedback buyer, don't cancel it, send it out, give them the benefit of the doubt. Yeah. I mean, here's the thing, you know, I may not offer free returns, but one thing that I do is if it's an item that I sell and say they come back with me with an issue and I don't believe that it's going to be a, a resellable item. If that issue is large enough for me to say, you know what, I'm not planning on selling this again. I'll just refund them their money and, and, and just tell them, you know, not a problem. Keep it. If you can use it, great. If you can't donate it, right. Throw it, throw it in the trash, use it as a shop rag, whatever you want to do with it. But um, you know, a lot of times that goes a million miles with somebody because then it's not a, it's not a hassle for them to return the item either. I want to bring up something that Shane did. Uh, uh, what was it? Probably like four or five shows ago. God, how many shows have we done already? I feel like we're done a decent amount. Holy crap. Um, <laughs> there's 89 people watching like Chris, how old are you? Me? 36. Yeah. 36 and look at that head of hair guys hit the like up. I have thick hair <laughs> 30 36 years old and he's got a full head of hair hit the like button for that um, <laughs> That's awesome, but uh, congrats congrats to Chris like seriously. He's he looks like a, hair, Yeah uh, But Shane brought up a good point that I use this hundred percent of the time. There's an issue hundred percent of the time. There's an issue. Let's say you it happens. We have an item. The buyer bought it, but you can't find the item. You have to cancel the order. Um, they can still leave a feedback, right? So even if you didn't ship the item, they can still leave feedback. People don't realize that. So if I canceled the order and never really shipped them the item, they can leave feedback. And like, this, 
didn't have the item. So what I do to mitigate a bad um, negative feedback is I will message them. Shane brought this up, but it's a great point. Every single time I'll do this, I'll message them, look, sorry for the issues, blah, 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 blah. If there's ever an item in my store that you like, I'll give you a deep discount. Message me before you're you, before you buy it. And what that does is it mitigates them leaving a negative feedback because in everybody's minds, and if this happened to you, they're going to not leave you that negative feedback because they know they can always go back to you and get a discounted item on an item that you have in your store. So that's one thing that I, I applaud right. uh, I applaud you guys to do. If there's whatever the issue is on their end, your end, if there's a risk of a negative feedback, if they did not open a return for any reason, if they did not open the return, then you cannot be covered under that new eBay policy. Right. So use that as like a thing in your tool belt to uh, to make sure that you can. Uh... Do we have a troll in chat? Yeah, we do. Uh, Holy trolling! Jesus! Wow! Wow! wow. Well, you know you you know you're doing something right when you get the trolls coming out. Yeah, they obviously didn't like the fact that he wasn't bald, man. So, and add to Wade's point, what is it? Sixty days? Sixty days after the the item is purchased, they have to leave feedback. <sighs> I am I mean, actually not, I'm not sure. I believe that's correct, but I'm not positive. Um, I had one where someone was fighting me on. Uh, they wanted to return something after two months. So no. I so I, sixty days. Still working. I knew they were gonna. Ding me. Yep. Yeah, it, it just, you know, there's so many different things that you can do to like mitigate, you know, issues. Um, I, I saw one question um, Am I going to be moving shoes to Poshmark? <laughs> Heck yeah. Um, so I'll keep for virtually all the real expensive clothes on eBay, but I'm finding that I'm getting more money on Poshmark and there's no oh, returns yeah. on Poshmark. So that's the way to go. And, and there is a Poshmark share too, by the way. Um, just, just so you know, Poshmark share is a uh, is a crazy tool for Poshmark people. Poshmarkshare.com, and it's done by real people. There's there's only one instance where I don't offer returns, and that's when I sell. I, sell, I buy a lot of liquidation items, liquidated items, custom returns. I test everything. And if I know something's not broken, there's a ton of people out there looking for parts. Yeah. Uh, if I, if one button's not working, a piece is missing, I'll sell it as uh, used. Now, was it what's the condition? Uh, I forget what it's exactly what it's called. Parts not working. So put that oh, in the yeah, condition. Yeah. Parts, working. parts repair. Uh, and then select re uh, no returns. So if someone doesn't read the description. Or and you have everything spelled out. I put it everywhere: condition, description, parts not working. Uh, they will side with you on that case. If you so, don't offer returns if you know you're selling it for parts. Right. I I've done something for almost a year now that everybody in chat's going to disagree with, but I'm going to tell you guys. Are you guys ready? Everybody in Mike chat's going to disagree. With? Mic drop no, material. No, what what's that? Is this mic drop material? No. Well. I think it is, but nobody's going to agree with me. Nobody's going to agree with me. Um, so in, I've got 2,400, well, 2,200 items now. Actually, 2,700, but 22 unique items, 2,200. And um, in in the conditions field, I put 100% money back guaranteed, and I've done that for the last year. All right? Um, because that's one of the first things that you see when you pull up an item. When you pull it up, it's the conditions. It's not really the description that people see, right? Um, they do that so that way if there's an issue, they'll see that first before they buy it. And I also put the issues in there as well, but I put 100% money back guaranteed because I think it's a marketing tool that the people, when they see that, they automatically are reassured. Kind of like if you've got really good feedback or if you've had, you sold a lot of items. A lot of people disagree, but my return rate's under 3%, and I've done that for even before they, they, they kind of wanted to push free returns. So. Right. It's not a, that's not a bad thing, Wade, because that honestly instills uh, buyer confidence at that point as well. So yeah, it's come from the seller. Who does that, right? I'm trying to think of, I'm trying to think of like outside the box. What can I do differently? And oh gosh, I, I. By the way, by the way, this is off topic, but all my comments got deleted, and uh, it's because I had my kiddos in my videos. Darn it. 
Um, anyways, though, um, yeah. So 100% money back guaranteed in all the conditions field. That's I've done that for a while now, and I feel like it helps. It's just something else I can do that right. other sellers won't. So. Right. Wait, I think uh, I, I know this is a little off topic. I'm not going to stay on it here very long, but I heard that there's a way that you can manually turn your comments back on. Don't know for sure. Yeah, so there it you can manually turn your comments back on, but on some videos they're deleted. Like, so for example, uh, some of my videos they didn't turn them off; they just turned all your newer uploads right off. But on some of the older videos, they say comments have been disabled, and those you cannot turn your comments back on. So. All right. What about what do you guys do when you get returns? You get that dreaded bell. I, I just accept them and move on. You know what I mean? That's the I best. I go get a beer. <laughs> <laughs> sure. Uh, so I'm curious. We haven't. I'm gonna let Chris do this. Chris, you uh -huh. gotta ask your audience. What am I doing? Ask your audience. Type one. If they offer free returns, two. If they do not. All right. I'm gonna pull a Wade move here. Everyone in the chat, type one. If you offer free return. Type two if you don't. Uh, yeah. The SMG got a return. And FYI, everybody, Scott is not here tonight because he's out. Uh, and I've seen that a few times in the chat. He's not here tonight because he's out. Yeah, he had uh, a sourcing opportunity, and and I told him, I'm like, dude, you can't get on the show. Just take it. I mean, just go. We got it. Scott's fired. <laughs> God, he missed his first show. You and I haven't missed his show yet. First show, man. Oh, jeez. He's, he's he getting crap, so Jason could give him crap about that. And... Looks like majority are offers free returns. Yeah. See a lot of ones. Plus, yeah. you got yeah. free returns. I want Scott here, too, man, because I wanted to show him this, you know? Oh, 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 oh. <laughs> have you guys uh, have you guys seen the three amigos yet? All right, can you see that? That oh, yeah. is the amazing three amigos logo. So I uh, I had to put that on Insta today because it just like makes me laugh every single Dude, time. It was awesome. I seen it on my card, and I'm like, that is amazing. I I'm I forgot Scott's arm is around my arm. I was like, what the <laughs> heck? Can you guys see that? Yeah. <laughs> oh, I missed the arm. He has the arm around it. Yeah, he has got the armor. I, I didn't know so until today, but it's comforting. Yeah, yeah. Um, you know the best thing about being an adult is you can have dessert before dinner. What is that? What is it that? McDonald's apple pie? Don't oh, judge me. those are good. Nasty. I like the. Uh, I like the. Uh, what's the pie with the? It's like a cream in it. It's like a the birthday or whatever. Or, it's amazing. Well, that's why he has gray hair. He's eating all this crappy food. <laughs> I don't know if you guys got it over there where you guys are at, but in Miami, we got the guava and cheese apple pie, the guava and cheese pie from McDonald's. Well, we don't got it here. That's amazing. Man, you, you got to go to Miami, man. That's where everything's at. You know what I like, though? When I, you get down south, you get down to all those Whataburgers. Whataburger is amazing. Yeah, it is. Really good. No, I just said don't judge me, and the first thing y'all did was judge me. <laughs> hey, the chat, the chat is judging you too. The chat is judging you so hard. <laughs> I don't know if saying hell of that's a compliment or not. Hey, I don't know if I'm doing something wrong, but how do I see the the chat? You no, you go right through uh, YouTube. I mean. Uh -huh. Yeah, just make sure you have the uh, on mute when you pull it up, and then you can uh, see the video, and then the chat, and then you just make sure you have it on mute so it don't play back. Close. Yeah. That's so Oklahoma. <laughs> that's so Oklahoma. <laughs> get the debt get down. Um, <laughs> we'll, we'll have Jason as like the picture of it. it would, I think it would sell really quick if that was not. Uh, 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 oh, okay. That was a bad joke. Uh, guys, can you believe it? Like, what month are we in right now? It is crazy. Um, Q1's over, pretty much. I mean, it's it's going to be over soon. And um, and now we're going to be in Q2. 
and then Q3, and then now we're in you know Q4. So I mean, all I can say is this: I'm curious to see. I know that the beginning of every single year, everybody has all these goals, right? For reselling, reselling related, they have all these things they want to do, right? Um, have you guys accomplished your goals? Like, or are you guys going towards the area in which you're going to conference? Your, uh, uh, you're gonna you're gonna crush your goals. I'm curious to see. You know, in chat, let me know, guys. Type one if you are actually on the trajectory you need to be to crush your goals when you first set them out at the beginning of the year, because. Q1's here, you know, and, and it's going to be gone soon. Then we're going to be in Q2, and then we'll be in Vegas. The timeline, it, the time is flying, guys. I guess that's the point. And I really want to make sure that you guys realize that time is flying, weeks are flying by, and uh, you've got to accomplish your goals before the year's up. After this, I want to do something special. So after after all the one stop, uh, I'll be back. I got to go to uh, blow my nose real quick. Can I be Shane's going to do a backflip. No, he, he saw your apple pie thing, and he's like, oh, my God. <laughs> Puking. Chris, all you do is eat, like, vegetables and healthy stuff, right? No. No, not at all. I eat the easy stuff when I can. Kids make it harder to eat good. Okay, so we have some ones. So th that's the biggest thing is I'm curious. Like, are you where you want to be? We always have room to improve, but, like, you know, month one, month two, we're on month three. You know, it's it's flying by, guys. So I think as long as you're making yourself one thing better than you were yesterday, I think that's good, right? Because you're not going to get a hundred thousand dollars in inventory dropped in your lap in one day. Then what are you going to do? Yeah, you never know. You know, you never know, right? <laughs> so like those jerseys you ran into, man. That was a dang good deal. Yeah. So yeah. increasing my opportunities where I could find those resources and uh, networks relationships, uh, growing that inventory of the multiple the, the deep skews. That's kind of where I'm looking to go. I like when someone said, what about GSP returns? Uh, if you offer free returns, you see if it sells through GSP, it's, it's, it's through GSP. I mean, like that's the thing is I had a customer, I sold them a Pokemon figure really like really crazy packaging. Like if it gets smashed, it gets damaged. I put it in a nice double wall box and a GSP yeah. that repackaged it. As soon as it hit it hit his house, he said it has damage. I said, listen, man, I double wall boxed it, everything. Um, but they they do sometimes repackage things. He messaged GSP back and they took care of everything. So eBay has a relationship with basically a company that manages I forgot the company name, they told me. Maybe it's, you guys know. Uh, yeah, I, I forgot it too. It's the same. It's a it's a well known it's a well known company. Yeah, Pitney Bowes. Yeah, Pitney Bowes. Yep. Yeah, and basically, if you that's why everybody should be. I'm sure all 106 of you guys watching right now is enrolled in global shipping. But, um, and I think that with like you know pirate ship and different uh, different options there too. Like you should open up international shipping past global shipping too. Like you should offer you should offer that. You probably get more sales, but. Yeah, if anything happens, you just call eBay, explain the situation, uh, because let's be honest, it is going you know across you know the world or whatever the case may be, and things happen. I mean, I shipped something to California, and, and, it, looked like, and, and it looked like it was like they played football with it. Um, imagine what it would be if they ship it to Spain or a different country like that. Like so, call call hey, eBay. Hold on real quick. Hey Alex, can you turn your speakers down a little bit? Yeah, I just I just saw the comment right now in the live chat. I, I, All right, yeah. cool, man. Cool, cool. I think we're getting some feedback from somewhere. All right, okay. So I've had it where I've had GSP return, and it only gave me the option to either purchase a label directly or reimburse the seller. That wasn't a damage item. They wanted to return. So that's where they had to buy their label. They shipped it to me, and then I refunded it. Hello, appreciate the chat. Thank you. Uh, good undercover asked for a good week of sales on Prairie. Hold on. We're getting a ton of feedback. I'm, to, I'm actually about to uh, transfer, or I'm about to uh, send all of my items to Prairie Grit. So we'll find uh, out. So, uh, so here's the thing. Uh, real quick, here's what I want to do. Real quick, is uh, sorry. 
I've had a little bit too much to drink. Um, so this is Alex's YouTube channel. He just done his first video, and he's our guest. And uh, everybody that subs, I want to, I want you to put. I'm going to steal this from Wade. I want you to put the number of sub that you sub that. So put the number of sub in the chat that you sub that. Yeah, I need to add a link down below. So make sure sub to him. Sub There'll be a link down there. Boom! I, I need a royalty on that. I know, right? I know. <laughs> Gosh, they still they steal everything, guys. Mic drops. I saw that in the channel a couple of days ago, and I was like, "What? What?" So, yeah. Nice package, Wade. <laughs> nice what? <laughs> nice package. Oh, hey. <laughs> <laughs> Wade, it looks cold in there. Thank, thank you, thank you. <laughs> nice. Hey, hey. Uh, it, it's all. It's guys. Seriously, I'm doing work over here. Doing work. Doing work over here. He just. He's just. He's just. He, Jason's just bitter. I'm. I'm over here. Taking <laughs> of a, I'm over here taking pictures of beautiful, beautiful women's clothing, and uh, and 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 Jason's over there. Says nice ass Wade. <laughs> <laughs> Who said that? Nice. That was good. Nice. Let's see. Where, where's the nice ass at? Liquidation Bros. Yeah. My man's got that's, me. That's, his name's Tim, right, Chris? Dan. Oh, Dan. I seen you guys did a video together. I like that video, man. I watched it. It was really good. Yeah, we're gonna do something little Thursday nights. Uh, Dude, I like. Yeah. I like it, man. So yeah, if you haven't subbed to him as well, get hit. He does a lot. He just scored some ton of uh, DJ equipment. I gotta give Wade a hard time any chance I can because I know he does this home to me. <laughs> that hey, was a good one, uh, Jason. He said my grandkids are watching. <laughs> I, hey, my am I over here? Where am I at? Where's Jason at? See this way or this way? Other way. This Wait, way. Left. This left. way. Left. Yeah. That, 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 that. That way. Crazy Jason. Um, anyways, all right. So, you know, there's not much to say about. I know we did free returns is kind of the topic, and um, there's not much. You know, all I can say is like free returns. Not it's not only for the benefit of eBay, but also the benefit of me because I have had zero complaints with free returns. I probably get an extra what one or two a month, maybe let's just say three a month from free returns. If had I not had it, maybe they wouldn't have shipped it back, but. Um, I just like, it, it's just crazy to me that the, the different options you have, the fact that they will remove any feedback, the fact that I can, if it's not exactly how it was, I can chop it when I do the return, um, just everything in general. So, so well, what do you think? Oh, good. Uh, let me ask you a question. So on the panel of, of you, if you shop on eBay, do you go and look and see if it's free returns? Do, does any of us shop on eBay? I oh, flip yeah. on eBay. I, I've I've purchased several things on eBay. I, you know, I don't really pay that much attention to it because I just assume that I look at I look at buyers' feed or sellers' feedback, and if it's you know good feedback and the item has good feedback, I'll purchase it regardless. Really? Mm -hmm. I'll I'll look at a couple things. I'll read the description. I'll check returns, at condition, and feedback. Wade, do you buy anything on eBay? Uh, well, put me on the spot. Hopefully, eBay's not watching right now. <laughs> um, got, yeah. got, got some good there. ones today. Woo, got some good ones. You got. You guys were spending all week to figure out how you're going to get Wade. Is that what it was? Uh, <laughs> Jason, I, I told, before the show. Guys, I real quick. I'm going to make. Uh, I've got my sit and stand desk here. You guys can't see, but I feel like. My brain power is like 10x, 10x what it was. So when you stand up, you're just smarter because your your blood's pumping. But um, yeah, I don't think I. The last time I bought something was probably maybe a year ago. I don't buy anything on eBay. Yeah, I, I buy honestly pretty much everything for my business on eBay. Yeah, I, I just bought something from eBay yesterday. I got this thing. 
right here. I got this at a at a yard sale, yeah, for ten bucks. And the only thing right, that was, missing was um the USB cable. So I paid five bucks, free shipping, on eBay, and I got got me a USB cable. It's a triple check if it works too, you know, because yeah. You know, they it turned on, but since I don't have the USB cable to connect it and really get it to working, mm -hmm. but hey, it was worth it. Chris, I, I wanna I'm not throwing this out there. Um <laughs> I know, I know I'm gonna get judged by this. I bought this off of eBay two weeks ago. Oh nice. This is my third one. That's so I, first I one, bought mine off of eBay. So the first one I threw it away. The second one. <laughs> Involuntarily, I dropped it and shattered the screen, and it won't work. So now I have a lanyard for it. So now when I go to scan books, just put it around my neck and go boop, 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 and I don't drop it. When did you drop the one? Just recently? A couple weeks ago. Oh, what's it sound like when you scan books again, Shane? <laughs> boop, boop, boop. That needs to be the intro. If I could somehow edit live and put that. In <laughs> that's that's what happens when you have kids. You realize that there's more sounds that can come out of your mouth. Like when you have small kids, you guys know that you try to do every sound under the book. And then when you get bigger, you just have all that. That's where his sound came from. Probably. Glow, Glow says, is it a breathalyzer? <laughs> no, it is not. Thank God. Um, it is actually a KDC 200. It's a, it's a, it's a scanner. You can link to your phone and scan books on Scott IQ. All right. Boop, boop, boop. I wonder if you get apple pies from McDonald's. By the way, Alex, you killed it picking up that thing for ten bucks, man. That's mm -hmm. that's a that's good cool. score. And and I, I'm I'm actually gonna make I'm working on making a video about that whole thing. So for you guys that are probably looking at my channel, like this guy only has one video, you know. <laughs> I'm I only got one video, um, but I am gonna be coming out with stuff once in a while, you know. Uh, just to just to have fun, really. So you guys want to enjoy, enjoy the ride. But um, yeah, when I bought that thing, like literally thirty seconds to a minute later, some guy I'm standing behind the table, and the lady, right? And so some guy just walks up to me, and he's like, and he grabs it, and he goes, "How much for this?" And I go, "Hey, hey, buddy, <laughs> I got it first, man. Sorry, buddy, you know." And he's like, "Oh man, that's a good find." But yeah, man, I was. Probably the best part of the whole day for me yesterday was that. Hey, Alex, one thing's for certain. Every single one of us started with one video on YouTube. So keep it up, brother. Yeah, man. It's just the beginning, man. It's just the beginning. I uh, I don't know how much you were willing to share, but you, you mentioned that you know you, you came from humble -ish, uh, humble background there, and now you're selling on eBay. Like, I love talking with new people that are selling on eBay because we all know kind of when we at first clicked, right? Whether you're part time or you're going full time, like the bug that you have to just do extremely well and, and uh, make money online. Like I love talking to people like you when I do in my interviews that have done you know eBay for such a short time because you guys have that bug that just willingness to just crush it and uh, yeah. it's infectious. Yeah, man. I mean, um, for me, man, it's like. If you really knew my life, my story, you would understand a little bit more. It's a little bit easier to understand because, like I said in the beginning, I, I was homeless four years ago, and it's not its not because of anybody else. It was because of decisions I made with my life that turned me, that, le that led me there, right? I mean, um, you know, at 12 years old, I started doing drugs, man, and, and I didn't stop, you know, and I spent 18 years abusing drugs to the point where I lost everything in my life i'm talking about and i'm not talking about money i'm not talking about houses i'm not talking about cars or clothes or or nothing materialistic i lost my dignity i lost um love for myself i lost a trust for my family and and that led me to homelessness man and and when i when i finally realized i needed to change and i finally wanted to change um you know it led me down a great path and these people took me in they helped me out and and they got me to where I'm at today. And just, uh, you know, just a year, I got my own place and I got my own car and, you know, and I've been working and, and, and just doing it. And, and, and I started realizing, man, you know, I don't like what I'm doing, you know? And it was more like, this is what I have. So I'm grateful for it. And I do it because I'm grateful for the life I have um, compared to where I've been. So I was working, busting my butt, man. And, and, 
and I realized, man, I, I don't like it, you know. And 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 then I and then I started thinking about, you know, when I was little, my grandma used to stop at the side of the road, and because um, she saw a shoe sticking out of a trash can, right? <laughs> and and it would embarrass the crap out of me because here's my grandma, you know, stopped in the middle of traffic on my way to school in the morning. All my friends are in traffic behind me, look laughing at me, you know, and she's digging through this trash can trying to find this other shoe, right? And so everybody, and so my grandma would hoard things inside her house. She would go into her house and she had like a TV here and a TV on top of that TV and then another TV on top of that TV. She had two couches that didn't match. She had a rack of for men, women's, boys and girls. I mean, and people will go into the house and tell her, hey, throw that stuff out. That stuff is garbage. And she's like, no, this is for so-and-so and for so-and-so, right? And I never knew, I never understood it because I'm listening to what everybody else is saying as a kid. And I realized later on, because she would give this or she will have yard sales. And I'll be with her at the yard sales, you know, setting it up and selling stuff. And, and, and it made sense to me not too long ago. You know, that's what my grandma did. My grandma was getting all this stuff because she had this like faith she had this uh belief that she was going to give it to somebody and, and and eventually these things would land in the hands of people that needed it you know so you know i come from from that kind of perspective of the whole reselling thing and and then one day i was you know i, I was i was looking at videos and and all that and, and i started like oh man this sounds cool you know let me research it and i did about five or six months of research through articles on Google, asking people, I did all that, but I knew that that's what I wanted to do. And I actually would use my Amazon Prime account on my phone to scan stuff. Like I would go to to, to the clearance, and I would see, man, this stuff is uh this stuff selling for five bucks here, but on Amazon it's selling for forty, man. You know. And, and I knew right away that I was going to get into it. And I started watching all of you guys. I started watching a bunch of other guys like Side Hustle Pros, Reezy Resells. I mean, the list goes on and on, you know. Um, and then one day I, I, was, uh, I, was, I was at work. And I see, and, and we had gotten a brand new truck. So they tell me, hey, use the truck and, um, and see if, uh, you know, see if you like it, whatever. And I take it around the corner and there's a big old 75-gallon fish tank sitting on the side of the road. You know, and and I passed by it. I slammed the brakes and I said, I'm picking that up. And I reverse. I put it in the back of the truck and I put it on, on offer up. Right. And um, within a few days, some kid hit me up and he wanted it. He was going to give me like 60 bucks or 100 bucks. I can't really remember. And um, and I had to get it transported from my dad's to my house. Well, my dad chipped it. Right. And here we go. Talking about the customer service. My dad chipped it. So I reached out to the guy and I was like, hey, look, man, I got to be honest with you. I can't sell this to you uh, in the condition it's in. You know, I got to be honest. It chipped. It's not cracked. It might still work. And the kid was like, I'll take it, you know. And I was like, all right, you, you can have it for free. The kid comes over. I help him load it in the car. And he gave me $20. And I was like, no, man, keep it. He's like, no, man, here, $20. I like that you were honest with me, you know. And I took that $20 bill. And I put it inside of an, a bank envelope and I wrote for my online business, do not touch. And I put it on my wall and, and I left it there. And every time, and then one day I get that $20 bill and I'm passing by Goodwill and I go into Goodwill. And by that point, I already had, um, I was using the eBay, you know, the eBay scanner. And I started learning about all that. From these, and I was watching Gary V, you know. Uh, trash talk and all these things and so I saw these mugs and I saw these stuffed animals and I saw this other thing a uh, coffee filter thing and I spent eight dollars at, at Goodwill right and by the time I got to my uncle's house and I showed him hey look what I bought at Goodwill he bought uh, one of the cups for five bucks so I already made half of my money back I told him, and my mom was like hey save me that I'm gonna pay you she she, she wanted to give me for the little coffee filter thing, but I gave it to her for a Christmas present. You know, it's my mom. I can't, I can't do that to my mom. But, um, but still, that 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 was a spark. And then three days later, I found a little Smurf. A little uh, that day, I bought a little Smurf and I put it on eBay, right? With a tag, I wrote down the description. You know, the new the new seller experience. Oh, it took me like three hours to make that freaking listing. So, 
I, I put it up and like three, four days later, my phone goes cha-ching for the first time. Your item sold, ship now. And my heart started racing. I'm at work. I don't know what to do. How do I ship it? Where do I get? Long story short, it cost me about $10 to ship that box out of my pocket on top of what they paid because I didn't know what I was doing. I lost money, you know. But at the end of the day, it was so I knew from that moment forward that I was going to do this and I was going to fail a lot. And I was I was wanting to fail. And my goal, my first year goal is not to make money. It's not to become rich. It's not to become famous. It's to help people along the way. Like my family, I got a family member that, that's a nurse and she wants to quit. You know, she wants to quit and, uh, uh, to, to do this whole reselling thing. You know what I'm saying? So, you know, inspire people and all that. But my goal is to make as many mistakes and grind really hard this year. And so I can mess up as much as possible so I can prepare myself for next year, stack my money so that next year I can really go with this reselling thing, you know? So I've messed up so many times, man. I made so many mistakes and I'm grateful for all of it. And it's it's got me to where I'm at today that I got a Poshmark thing and I got the eBay thing and I got a closet full of women's clothes, man. Oh, I, I, I don't got I don't got a woman to come by here. My mom doesn't even visit me because she lives in you know what I'm saying. <laughs> but it's 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 been a great experience, man. And, and I'm not stopping. You know, I'm not stopping. And it, it's and everybody around me sees it, so it motivates more, you know. And I definitely, definitely don't want to go back to that guy that was on the street, you know, not knowing where I was gonna sleep. You know what I'm saying? So for me, that's that to me, that's also part of the fire, you know. Yeah, I think it's yeah. how what can I say about that? Um at the end of the day, you know, it you've got a really interesting story. And um all I can say is keep keep crushing it. I think that people that whatever the issue is, whether you're addicted to sports gambling or you're addicted to drugs or whatever the case may be, because I've been around that quite a bit, you've got to find something to fill that void so you can get off of what you're doing bad. And I feel like, you know, um for some people you know, they get, they, they, they have kids and, you know, that kind of gets them along spiritually or it's eBay or, you know, it's just something to fill that void. And so I think that's really cool. Keep crushing it. Um, the funny thing is, is I, I tell this to everybody, but it's the people with like no malicious intent and in, intentions when it comes to YouTube that crush it. It's the people that are like genuine that really do want to help people. Yeah. You make money, but the people that are genuine always do the best on YouTube. So I, I'm, I'm going to put your link in chat, guys. Make sure you go subscribe to this man. And uh, and hopefully, you know, you can have an audience when you create these videos that, you know, understands kind of your story and, and what you're doing going forward. So it's amazing. I, I would love to hang out. What is? It? I don't know if it was your mom or your aunt, but I would love to hang out there and do some sports betting because it sounds like she has the perfect setup with all those TVs, right? Yeah, it was it was my grandma. It was my grandma, but uh, yeah, she she doesn't have all that anymore. She's uh, we we've cleared that out for her, you know. <laughs> she's she's actually in Tennessee with my mom, you know. I think my mom's watching. What's up, mom? I'm on YouTube. Mom, mom, mom be proud of this man over here. Where's mom at? Is she a lurker? There's a bunch of lurkers in chat. The hundred don't when you get when you get on YouTube, the the mics up here, so it's important. Uh. 111 people, and I see like the constant 20 people talk, but really, you know that there's 80 lurkers in chat. So you lurkers, you lurkers, you get you lurkers, you lurkers, guys, say something, say hello, guys. I know there's 80. Something too about the whole lurkers thing. Back in uh, December, when I first started Amazon, I I I made a comment to uh, Scott. You know, I made a comment to Scott. And it was my first time commenting, first time saying anything. I just said, hey, where would you recommend for a new seller, you know, what category to sell under in, in Amazon or what to look for? And that's where he told me, hey, man, you know, it depends on your location. Where, you know, you got yard sale here, you can go there. And that interaction, it helped, it helped motivate me even more, you know, because right now, my, my thing is I live in Miami and we have yard sales, estate sales. Where Garage sales 24 7 year round. I mean, if it gets cold here, it's 60 to de 40 degrees, and 40 degrees really feels like 55, and people are wearing jackets, you know, but it's really not cold. 
So it's like that. So far, that's where I'm learning. I'm 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 heading towards more of that direction of going to yard sales, estate sales, and all that. You know. You notice. Uh, you notice. By the way. Oh man, I was trying to think of a song that Miami song, that famous Miami song, but I can't think of it. Yeah, Will Smith. No, 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 no. Was it? Was yeah. it Tupac Miami? Wait, no, no, that wasn't Miami, was it? That was California. Ah, oh, screw it. I don't even know. <laughs> um, anyways, uh, obviously this is not a sh- <laughs> Jason. Huge <laughs> Jason. He, he's he's just over there taking pictures of purses, guys. Um, yeah, I say that, but I, I have a bunch of purses listed. Anyway, um, yeah, look at all the lurkers in chat. Seriously. I mean, uh, if, you, if you have to think about your why, I mean, after that story, I mean, if you think about your why, why you're doing it, no. uh, what drives you to, to go to the next store, stay up late, ship items, lose money on shipping, as long as you learn uh, what you're doing and why you're screwing up, make yourself better. That's all that counts. And and who can't remember their first cha-ching, right? Talk about a blood rush. That. Well, I still get the cha-ching and it gives me the chills. I get that thing, of, you, you know, you got a little chip, but then you realize it's a return, right? And you're like, Ugh, and then you sink six inches. I remember my first uh, return. No, no, my first return. My my first, no, no, it wasn't my first, it was my second item. So get this. This was my second item ever selling on eBay. I sold this thing. It was a, um, uh, uh, you know, those convection ovens that like, or is it a convection oven? You know, they, they cook the turkey really quick, you oh. know? Um, so I had this thing, uh, prior to shipping, was it priority? Something like that. This was a while ago. And, um, this thing was big. It was heavy. No, it was overnight. That's what I had it. I screwed up in the listing and put it overnight. Ooh. And I was in, I was, I was in, uh, <laughs> shipping to Florida. And I remember them saying, uh, that it would cost like 420 bucks to ship this thing overnight via FedEx. And mom was in the car. She got out of the car and she started bus stamp laughing. Mom, <laughs> I don't know if you're in chat. Uh, because I sold I sold this thing for like $40 and they wanted over 400 to ship this thing. I can't remember the exact amount. It was a while ago. But I just remember dying in, in, inside thinking this is not for me. Uh, you know, selling on eBay is not for me. And then uh, all of a sudden you get, uh, you know, you get stories like this that you have those little hurdles your first few you know, solds and then, uh, you're, you're still selling. So yeah, mom, if you're in chat, let me know. Mom, mom remembers. So I did thought, you overnight it? I crapped my pants. No, I actually messaged the buyer and I was like, dude, I can't overnight this thing. I mean, it's costing like a crap ton of money and then they understood. So and then I shipped it, but yeah, it was crazy. It, I just remember. And then the guy behind me was like, what the hell is going on? <laughs> Cause he heard the whole story. I had like the whitest face ever. Um, and this is before I even printed out my own labels. I would actually go there, pay for it in person. So, yeah, incredible. All right. Well, uh, come back up in an hour here. You want to have anything left before we cycle through and yeah, return? Uh, I, got, I, got, stories? I got one more thing on the return deal. Um, don't do what I do and just like when the return comes, just like set it to the side and forget about it forever and – like put it in the tote and then it's there for three years before you pull it out and take more pictures of it. Don't do that. You know, if it's something that you can resell uh, immediately, just relist it and uh, re inventory it immediately. Um, that's something I'm really bad about. I've got like 40 returns sitting in a pile from like two years ago. I haven't messed with. So that pile back there. Don't do that. No, that's not the returns pile. The returns pile is over there. <laughs> Wait, you're on mute. Do you guys see that? Um, like every single show, do you guys watch Jason? And do you see if his big tote thing over there actually goes down? Like every <laughs> single night, I see that, and. Uh, and I'm like, uh, every single show, I'm like, hey, did that thing go down? No, 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 it didn't go down. No. It's still, yeah. The anyway. things on the the things on the rack do change, though. We need to take pictures and do a, a time lapse of his room. Uh, Don't even, you guys. Ooh. I'm about to. That's it. Hey, <laughs> uh, 
Well, liquidation, uh, liquidation pro said I had a nice ass. So, I mean, that uh, I'd rather have that than a big pile over there. No, the I nice ass been. and the beep boop beep is the, the comments of yes. the night. Yes. Sorry, D. I know your grandkids are watching. All right. So we want to cycle through, give a last piece of advice before we head off for the night. Uh, Alex, you want to go first? Usually we give a piece of advice, something to end the show with. Uh, yeah, I mean, the only piece of advice I can give uh, is, is, is uh, as a perspective of the new seller, man, for the new sellers out there, right? Like, you're going to you're gonna have hurdles, returns. You know, I, I, my first Amazon return, I freaked out, you know, Um I didn't know what to do, but if you're if you're really diligent about it and you're cons and and what's the word I'm looking for um pers persistent about you know learning and not looking at your failures or your mistakes as 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 a wall look at it more like a hurdle right like a wall yeah you can climb over a wall whatever but what I mean is look at it like a hurdle like you could just jump over it you know so you. Just, just work at it. Don't stop, you know, and, and really have a real purpose as to why you do it. I'm telling you right now, I'm promising you this. Doing it for money and only money, you will give up. I promise you. Because there's been 150,000 times I've wanted to give up, but the only reason I haven't is because I feel the passion towards it. Because I have not made the money that you see the, the guys post up. I made $400 in an hour. I made $2,000 shopping at Walmart in 30 minutes. You know, I have not done that. Yeah, that was a little eye-catching, right? It's a little motivating. But in reality, the truth is, for me, a guy that started with $0, a guy that didn't, you know, I'm not making a million bucks a day. You know what I'm saying? I'm, I'm, I'm very, very patient with it because, for me, it's not about the money. Yes, money is... Uh, a, a motivation is it's a, it's a reason why we do it right we want to have a little bit more money so we can be a little bit more you know at ease and at peace with our bills and all that stuff but if you do it about if it's about money i promise you sooner or later you're going to hit the wall and and it's not and you're not going to last you're not going to last so find find a reason why whether it's your family whether it's your you know, if, if, if it's something you just love to do, you know, it's for me, I just love to do it, man. I love to do it. Jason. Well, uh, I get really the only piece of advice that I have tonight is, um, you know, kind of step out of your comfort zone and the stuff that you typically look at for sourcing to sell on eBay, Amazon, whatever platform you sell on. Like for instance, for me, um, now that I'm buying storage units, now that I'm finding other avenues and other, other products to sell other than clothing and shoes, I wished I would have done it sooner. Um, because now 11, 12 years into the resale game, I don't know most things, uh, and have a very vague, uh, um, I, 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 I don't know mo most things other than clothing and shoes. And, um, the thing is, is like, it makes it more difficult now for me because I have to take a lot more time to research every single item. And, uh, I just, I think that, uh, you guys would be doing yourselves a favor by kind of broadening your horizons early, especially early in your resale career, uh, uh you know, and, uh, just kind of step outside of your comfort zone and try to learn a little bit about everything as you go along. Because if you put yourself in a little box and you stay in that little box, if an opportunity to source something else comes up, you're going to be clueless. And, uh, you know, the thing is, is if the more knowledge you have in different categories, the better odds you have when you're going to a garage sale, you know, the better odds you'll have at finding things that are actually worth money. So, that's a that's my piece of advice today. Shane, Shane sleeping. Oh, sorry, sorry guys. <laughs> so, anyways, uh, basically, my main point to take away is this: is I started out a lot like Alex. I had twenty dollars in my savings account when I first started in retail management. And what I want to tell you is, anybody can do this. I'm just a dude that sells shit out of my basement. 
and I'm a normal guy that took uh, the dice roll at starting a YouTube channel and it actually working. And I, for me, it's, it's hard work and it's dedication. And as long as you have that, you're going to go far. Um, that's all it is, is hard work. I mean, you have to put in the work. Mine is don't let returns get you down. Just take the return, move on, sell, sell two more than the one you took back. Wade, let's close this out. Uh oh, I'm I'm last here. Uh, <laughs> uh oh, that can mean one of two things, guys. Uh, so I had to get my chat window open so I can see. I I want to I want to commend Jason because he actually said something that was extremely smart in the fact that um, if you guys want to be humbled, go buy a bunch of storage units and realize how much you do not know. It's simple as that. Like. So I guess my thing is, is like this year I had a lot of goals that I want to achieve. And um, so I'm not saying you have to hustle every single minute, but realize when you're not doing something you wanted to do at the beginning of the year and correct that now before time flies and it's the end of the year. So um, whether you wanted to start a YouTube channel and do social media or, you know, you wanted to possibly get a warehouse or maybe you're part time wanting to go full time. Like just work towards whatever goal it is. I, I think that it's really cliche, but I think if you like think about it, you believe it's going to happen and you put the work behind it, kind of like Shane said, then I really do think that you can achieve it. So just make sure that I guess my, my tip to you is like take two seconds now and like right now while we're live, right now in chat, take two, two, two seconds and think in your mind – what goals did I have this year? And then see if you are anywhere closer to hitting those goals. You know, we're at the beginning of the year in your mind, wonder if you're, if you're going to hit those goals. But um, I did get one question. Wait, are you going live tonight? No, no, no. Never more antiques invited me on his YouTube channel, guys. We're going to do a hangout. Yes. Nice. A hangout. Yes. Uh, I just invited myself on his channel. He's probably like, very nice. Yeah, very, very nice. Very, can you do the, the – Shane, can you do the, the, the sound again? Very nice. My <laughs> name is Abola. <laughs> <laughs> very nice. Okay, <clears throat> main thing, guys, smile. Be inspired by this our guest over here. Like, he came from nothing, and now he's doing something he loves. And it's not only came from nothing, but, like, the humble background in which, you know, he chose, and now he's choosing a different path. Like I've grown up with that. I think it's really, really inspiring. So understand that anybody can achieve your goals. I, it's still it's still America. If you want to sit there and have shiny lights behind you and eat apple pies all day, then that's what you can do. <laughs> like seriously, you can do it. If, if you want to have the perfect hair and just look, you know, 20, although you're 36, 37 anyways you can you can look at look at chris like he's like kendall seriously or if you can wear your hat backwards and look like a pimp yeah like, yeah. oh yeah. yeah yeah so <laughs> just just love your life but realize that Sorry. you know we all want to provide for our families and have fun and to do that you have to make money in a, in a way and um just make sure that you're not fooling yourself because we all know you can fool yourself more than anybody. You okay. can fool other people, but you cannot fool yourself. You only know where you're at in, in your life. So, well, And here's the thing. You only have one life. So don't, don't go out and look for drama. Don't go out and create drama. Don't go out and be negative. Be positive every day and hustle. Yeah, Nevermore Antiques is quiet in chat right now. He's like, I don't want that fool on my channel. Where are you at, my man? I thought we were BFFs. Scroll up in chat. Look at this. Look at this. He is constantly commenting, and now he's not? Man, my man. I thought we were BFFs. Anyways, <laughs> uh, I'll see you on the next live show. All right, everybody. Thanks for joining. See y'all.